other colleagues that uh, cannot join today's session. All right. So as we were saying, this is the first write of um, uh, WebEx we are going to deliver. We have another two sessions next week. And the aim of today's session is to uh, provide you with, the, with an overview of the end-to-end -end process and the roles involved in that process. Okay. So for those of you who are not that familiar with that process, uh, this is going to be the, um, the background information for all of you that uh, we are all in the same page and we can start discussing about uh, which are the uh, main issues that uh, from New York and also from our end we are encountering and we are facing um, with, this pro with this process. Okay. And as uh, we said yesterday, uh, we might have uh, specific sessions for um, more um, question and answers and to discuss about which are the main issues uh, with this process. Okay, so in today's session we are going to review and we are pro going to provide with an overview, not only uh, with a presentation, but we will see how everything reflects in the system. All right, so um, let's start with the roles and responsibilities, so which roles are uh, involved in this um, in this process, okay? And we have some roles that are directly involved, okay, in the process that uh, are always initiating and um, managing the right of uh, process, and uh, basically as uh, roles that are directly involved with the right of process, we have. Here we talk always from the system point of view, we talk um, of system uh, roles, right? So here you have, or the third one we are gonna mention is the notification user. That is one of the roles that can create write on notifications. And here you have the Umoja uh, code, right? The SD01. And these notification users that are um, basically in the self-accounting units and in the technical sections are one of the roles that can uh, create write-off notifications. Okay. Second role that uh, we want to include here as uh, mainly involved in the write-off process are the approvers, the notifications approvers, also in the technical sections or in the self-accounting units. These are the ones that are in charge of uh, reviewing all the uh, write on notifications and uh, approve uh, the case or or react the case okay Ac according to the details provided by the notification user okay the third role that is the most important role in terms of uh, managing the whole process is the disposal planner okay the sd09 this is the role that is uh, already part of the property management unit in the in the missions and this role it's managing once the uh, write on notification it's uh, approved is the user that will manage the notification onwards and will make sure that all the different tasks and all the different actions related to that write of case it's properly handled and it's properly managed okay and uh, another role that is um, also involved in the um, in the uh, write-off in all the write-off cases is the um, equipment master data maintainer. Okay, so we have the SD11 and SD10 roles. Okay, that are the ones that can update uh, the equipment master record, and we will see later on uh, what's the purpose of updating the equipment master record to reflect. For example, the uh, the start the disposal method to uh, to display, for example, in which notification is the uh, is that um, equipment uh, being uh, written off. So there are there's information that uh, needs to be updated in the equipment master record, and the roles that can do that are the equipment master data maintainer, and there are two different roles, and the difference is that one of them, in particular, the SD10 that can create okay new master record for other purposes okay so i hope that you can um hear me properly i, I can see um edgar that uh, cannot hear me okay i hope all the others can can do all right and um 
I think Edgar, it has to be some something from your from your end. All right. So we, if you can say that, please try to. Um, okay. Thank you, Charbel, to com for confirming. Try to contact uh, Edgar via chat. All right. So let's move ahead. So these four roles: notification user, approver, disposal planner, and equipment master data maintainer. Uh, are always involved and directly involved in the write of process. And then we have other roles that uh, can be, depending on the type of uh, item and depending on, the, for example, the disposal method, can be involved in the write of process. Like, for example, we have uh, the fixed size account, uh, accounting user, the FA15, that in, in case the item that we are writing off, it's a fixed asset, this is going to be the role that will be in charge of um, retiring the fixed asset, okay? We will talk about that um, further in, in um, next week in the other sessions, okay, regarding the difference between fixed asset and non-fixed assets, okay? So today is just uh, an overview of the process. Um, we also have, or we can, um, involve also the inventory users and inventory senior users in case, for example, if we want to uh, return uh, the equipment back to stock to uh, proceed with the disposal. Okay, so these inventory users and senior users are involved in the return to the process via reservation and, and uh, good receipt. Then the same thing for warehouse roles, right, for the warehouse user and the warehouse senior user in case we are returning uh, an equipment back to stock or if we want to move an equipment that is in stock, we want to move it to the disposal area in the, uh, in the warehouse, then we have to involve the warehouse roles in the missions. And then, depending on the disposal method, right, disposal method, we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, um, further in this session. Um, there might be um, other user roles involved, like for example, logistics users or the um, service delivery user and service delivery senior user. So for example, if disposal method, it's a sale or donation, these two roles are gonna be involved to issue out from uh, stock and uh, eventually uh, sell or donate the equipment to a different entity, okay? So this logistics user and the service delivery uh, user are going to be involved in case the disposal method are going to be sales or donation. Okay, so here you have the main roles involved in the in the write off and the disposal method. Sorry, in the write off and the disposal uh, process. Okay. So. Uh, um, Let's start with the uh, write of process end to end. Okay, so we are going to be uh, reviewing step by step uh, which are the different uh, steps in the process. Okay, and we want to mix a little bit the presentation with how that uh, item, how that uh, step is reflected in the in the system. All right, so. The first step, okay, in order to initiate the the uh, right of case, it's to create the notification, okay, and this is uh, this can be done by the SD01 role, the notification user that is in the self-accounting unit, and also the disposal planner that is in uh, property management unit can all it's also allowed to uh, create uh, notification. But before doing that, okay, we need to make sure that uh, the equipment is not being um, read, written off uh, in a different notification, So, right? So let's say you receive, um, uh, or you want to initiate a write of case for a particular equipment. The first thing you need to do before creating any notification is to make sure that there is no other uh, um, right of notification that has been created for uh, the same case. And uh, this 
it's a, a common issue that has been detected by the um, by HQ, okay? And this is something that uh, usually happens uh, in the missions. So we have been seeing uh, duplicates, or we have we have been seeing um, uh, notifications created for the same equipment number. Okay. So before we continue with the uh, presentation, uh, let's uh, connect into the training environment. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna show to you how each step, how each step is done in the in the system. Okay. All right. Let me see also the chat and the um, questions. Okay. All right, so uh, Zina, yes, we are recording this uh, WebEx session and uh, we will share both the presentation and the, um, and the recorded link to uh, all, the, all the attendees, okay? So let me log in into the training environment. I'm gonna use the training environment and uh, remember, as we were saying yesterday, uh, you are gonna be requested to uh, perform some actions, some exercises in the in the training environment. So I'm gonna use the same training environment that you will have to use uh, in the exercise and uh, the same one you were using in the um, in the um, in the workshop, okay? In the GDP workshop. So I'm gonna click on the sub GUI to connect to the um, training environment ECC. And I want to show to you how uh, that, how to create a notification, and first of all, how to check if um, uh, an equipment is already part of the um, of our, an existing right of case. Okay, so keep with me for for a minute. I'm um, logging in in the training environment. Okay, so this will open ECC. All right. Permit use. Okay, permit all access. Okay, all right. So I'm gonna use T1E, the same one that you will have to use. All right. And then uh, in the exercise, all these things are gonna be written. Okay, so you will have to connect to client uh, 520 for training purposes and also we will be providing you the user accounts that you have to use in the uh, training environment, okay? So now I'm connecting in the training environment as a notification user. Uh, let's say uh, having given um, a list of uh, equipment, okay? For example, here I have three different equipment numbers, okay? I have to write off. Let's say you want to initiate the write-off for these three um, equipment master records. So the first thing, as we were saying before, the first thing you need to do in the system is to check that these equipment numbers have not been um, included in any notification, okay? So how do you do that? Okay, and we will see later on how to link notifications with the equipment and master record. So basically, the uh, not, uh, equipment master records are uh, linked to notification in the using the inventory uh, number field. So if we use the T code to display the um, equipment master record, the IE03, right, and we use the different equipment master records, the numbers, right? For example, this is one of the numbers we want to check if it's in, uh, included in a notification, right? If we do so and we open that equipment master record, okay? In this inventory number field is the one that should have here the um, notification number. So basically, if we don't see here the um, notification number, um, it means that the, uh, um, the equipment has not been linked to any notification. Okay. All right. Yeah. So 
we will see that later on but uh, this inventory number it's the uh, the one that will link the equipment master record so in this case we are talking about an equipment master record and this inventory number should have the um, the link to the notification we can do that with the three different items and for example if we use the um, the third one we will see that um, let's say for example this one okay we can see that this equipment master record uh, has been already included in a notification okay all right so one equipment master record can only be linked to one uh, notification so in the notification you can include several equipments okay and we will discuss about that uh, later on okay but uh, one equipment can only be linked to one notification okay so we will check uh, if the equipment is linked to a notification with the inventory number you, we can do that with the ie02 uh, or we can also use the ih08 okay with the ih08 we can include several equipments so we can include more than one all right we can include more than one and uh, we can display the three different equipments and from here we can see if any of them has the inventory number okay so we can add the field that we were talking about before the inventory number so let's look for the inventory number this is the field that should include the reference to the notification so we can add the inventory number we can make it the first field all right we click on uh, OK and the three different equipments that we want to include in the right on notification we can see that only one of them it's already included in a notification so the third one is already being processed and we should only uh, initiate the right of case for the first two equipments okay i can see questions um all right so but, but i think most most of the answers are going to be uh, treated in the in the following slides so i'm i'm reading that one okay i'm reading the questions but give me a little bit of time to go through the process because i, I think that a lot of the questions will be uh, treated um, in the different steps okay so that um that will be how to how to check if um equipment items have been included in a notification okay then uh, I, i'm having questions about grouping several items in the same notification so the main concept here and we will treat that also in the next week in the following sessions okay but uh, main concept here are that the six assets should always be treated individually so if you want to retire a fixed asset you always need for each fixed asset you need a notification so this is main concept here in grouping several items in the same notification is that fixed assets go individually then for non-fixed asset you can include several of them in the same notification okay so if you want to dispose several equipment uh, items or even inventory uh, items you can uh, initiate the write-off uh, using one notification but we will discuss that uh, you should group equipment items or inventory or inventory items based on the uh, netbook value or depreciated value or uh, moving average price because that will determine in the end um, the delegation of authority right who has uh, the rights to um, to approve right the the right of case if it's going to be um the delegated officially if it's going to be uh, the local property survey board or the hq property survey board okay so you should be grouping uh, equipment items or inventory inventory items based on the 
uh, delegation of authority categories, okay? Because the right of notification will be uh, later on processed and approved according to that. Okay, we will be talking about this concept of the uh, uh, netbook value and so on in next week when we show to you also the uh, the available tool for that purpose. Okay, so. Uh, um, w um, when you have checked, when you have completed the uh, checking that uh, equipment items have not been included in other notifications, you can initiate or you can create a notification uh, directly in the system. And remember, you need to check to select PW as um, notification type, okay? And that there is uh, an available reference template uh, to be used in production. So in production, you should be using uh, notification template um, 1002145, that is a template available for all uh, peacekeeping and special project missions. Okay, and uh, from HQ, this is another um, common um, issue that uh, uh, they are seen, so missions are not using that template. And remember, this is only to be used as a template, so please don't update a template, just use it as a reference. All right, so how, as a notification user, how can you um, create or initiate the write off by creating a notification? You can use T code IW51, all right. Notification type, as we said, it has to be, you have to select, please make sure you select PW is the notification type used for write off and disposal. So make sure you use that um, notification type. And here as a reference, make sure you select the reference to the um, peacekeeping um, template. Okay. So in um, in the training environment, it's going to be a different numbering, but for production, use the one that is uh, included in the presentation. Okay. All right. So if you select, if you use the template, what's the benefit? So if you select the template, if you use the, the template, uh, a lot of fields will be automatically populated. Like for example, the uh, mainly the uh, the coding okay and but mainly there is a standard list of tasks that is available in the task uh, uh, tab that includes the standard list of tasks that has been set up for uh, missions to use in all the right of cases okay so um we have used the the reference and what can we include in the uh, um, right of case. So we can use, oh, the first thing we need to indicate is the case type, okay? So we need to group items, as we said, based on the uh, delegation of authority, who is going to be um, um, entitled to approve this right of case, okay? If it's going to be the designated authority, if it's going to be uh, the local property survey board or the HQ property survey board. Okay. Another thing we need to indicate is the equipment number. So here we have to um, differentiate if we are including only one equipment number in the notification or we are using the same notification to write off several equipment items. Okay, so if we are writing off several equipment items, uh, we will need to attach the list of equipment numbers that we want to get rid of, that we want to initiate the write-off. And um, another thing we will include in the notification is the coding. If we, uh, what, um, why do we want to uh, initiate the write-off for those items? If the items are surplus, damaged, lost or faulty and the plant and planner group 
for, uh, that will allow the disposal planner um, that will allow the disposal planner to further manage the notification. Okay. Um, so I have a question in the chat regarding the reference template. Okay. So there is one reference template for all the missions. So the question I have here is about um, local templates. So if missions can set up their own templates based on their own needs. So I don't think that would cause a problem. So maybe CAS or uh, any from HQ that can uh, provide a little bit of, of light on that. Uh, Actually, the, <laughs> I was the one who raised the question. <laughs> okay. Oh, the sorry. Idea, the idea sorry, would yeah. be um, if you're going to have a repetitive process. So let's say you're going to write off uh, 10 fixed assets, and it's really all going to be one case, let's say but you have to raise separate notifications, could you raise one and then duplicate that 10 times, just changing the reference to the fixed asset? Did you catch that? Yeah, I can hear oh, you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't have to be answered now, but I, I, I think I've seen something like that where you can just the equivalent of copying and pasting it. Uh, yeah, in the in the end, the concept of template, there is no such a concept of template. It's uh, just a, a regular notification that you are using to uh, pre-populate, right, the, the different fields. Exactly. If you, if you are going to somehow repeat um, several, um, I mean, several notifications with the same, of almost the same uh, fields, you can create one with all the common fields, right, save it, and then uh, use that one as a kind of template for all the other ones. So yeah, that's completely possible, yeah. All right. So um, we were talking about notifications. So we have the, um, we already used the, the template, and then how do we indicate the case type, equipment number, coding, plant, and planner group? So the here we are back in the um, in the system right so the uh, category we were saying that uh, we need to indicate if the notification who is going to be entitled to to really uh, approve the, the case so that has to be set up in the object part field okay and in here we have the different uh, right of case types okay and we have the different ones the ones for if we want to uh, um, indicate designated authority LPSB or HPSB and that's why when you are thinking about including several equipments in the same notification you have to group them by case type because in the notification you will be only allowed to select one right so that's why uh, when we discuss about um, in, in um, next sessions about the um, how to group them by that, or how to calculate the depreciated value, or the um, um, how to calculate the value of uh, the inventory. It's to be able to indicate uh, the case type in the notification, and that's used also for reporting purposes. Okay. So let's say in this case we are not gonna review what's the value for those equipment. So let's say we have already done it, okay? And we will show to you in next week how to check for the value and how to choose the right uh, case type. So let's say that in this case, we have already done it and we know that it's gonna be the local property survey board. So we will select it here. We will show to you um, next week how to uh, properly select that one. Um, we will need to select um, the coding, right? What's the reason for the um, uh, write-off? So it can be surplus, damage, accident, right? All the different uh, process codes for write-off. Okay, so in this case, we can say that the equipment items were damaged or faulty. Okay, so we will select that one and uh, choose that one. All right, sorry, let's select um, damage, choose, okay. And 
in here, if we are saying that we want to process the write-off for only one equipment item, we can select the equipment item, we can indicate the equipment item directly in here, okay? If we want to write off only one equipment item, we can indicate the equipment item here, and uh, if we want to include more than one equipment item in the notification, we cannot indicate several, right? We don't have um, a field to indicate several equipment items, and we have to do it in the uh, description field, okay? So if we want to um, um, process the right of several equipments in the same notification, we will include here in the description, we will say that uh, um, attached the list of equipments that uh, have to be written off, right? So if we want to process several, you have to indicate it in the in the comments and then attach the um, the list of equipments. If we are only processing um, one equipment, you can indicate that field. You can indicate the, the equipment number in the equipment field, right? Okay. All right. So I have indicated the um, the equipment number. Um, one thing that you have to so besides the case type and the uh, and also the coding for in, for indicating the what's the what's causing the the write off, you need to make sure that you select the proper uh, plant and planner group that will allow the disposal planner to further manage the the write off case. So in here, you have to select your own. You have to make sure that you select your own plant. So by default, the template will default to uh, uh, headquarters, but you have to make sure you select your own plant. For example, let's say that we are talking about uh, a Monusco um, equipment and also the planner group. Okay. So you have to make sure that you select the, both the plant and the proper planner group. Okay. So this is uh, basically what you need to. Um, make sure you fill in in the uh, notification field and then as we were saying in the tasks in the task tab the uh, the template will default to the list of tasks that have been uh, standardized for all the missions okay so you have also in the in the job aid the list of tasks that are um, that come by default with your um, with your notification, okay. So these tasks uh, you can um, you can uh, manage and amend. Let's say that you, you can you can remove the tasks that are not applicable for this case. So if you see, for example, uh, there is a task. I think it's task number um, 16. That is the task to the recon the recognize the uh, uh, fixed asset. Okay, so let's say if you, if in this case the item we are not um, that we are um, writing off is not a fixed asset, we can just delete the task. Okay, so we can just uh, select the task and delete it. Right, so this one you can do it. So you can manage the list of, of tasks, deleting the ones that do not apply, and even adding new tasks. Okay. So, for example, if in your mission you want to keep track of the um, operational disposal of your equipment, you can add an additional task in the write-on notification. So, in here, from the uh, update of the disposal method and up to the deactivation of the equipment, in this uh, template there is no task in order to uh, manage the operational disposal. But nothing, pre nothing prevents you to add a new task, okay? So I could, as a notification user, I could add a task, right, to track the operational disposal. I can add as a task test the operational disposal from the system 
right, to track the different steps needed to uh, really or to physically dispose the item. Okay, so you can manage a certification user and also as a disposal planner the responsibility or the aim of this um, task list is to properly manage the different steps in the write off uh, process okay and then let's say i want to order right the um, the different tasks by the number i can do it by using the sort in ascending order so between the update of the disposal method and the deactivation of the equipment i have the task to um, dispose physically the item, right? So here it's the um, the uh, the different tasks, okay? And uh, as a notification user, I can um, save. I can save the uh, the notification, right? And I will get the notification number. In this case, it's ending with eight eight six five. So I have completed as a notification user or as a disposal planner, I have completed the create notification. Okay, so the task, as we were mentioning before, the task that are not required can be deleted and additional task can be added. All right. Um, after the notification has been created, also as a notification user, you can always um, amend it right to attach supporting documentation and that's important that you as a notification user you make sure that you attach the uh, the proper documentation justifying the case for write-off and uh, that everything it's uh, it's following the the policy and the uh, guide okay All right, and then once you have attached all the um, documents that are required, you can then request the notification approver to approve the notification. Okay, so notification approver will not receive automatically any um, any message. Okay, you can do that outside of the system via email, or you can also use the send email. Um, functionality to notify the notification approval. So you can use IW52 to um, review the notification. So IW51 to create it, IW52 to um, to modify it. Okay. So it's a write-off notification. Okay. And this is the one we have just created we can attach um, documents and make sure you do that, all right? Make sure you attach a document. You have that explained in the, in the job aid. So you have to use the, um, the um, record management plant and maintenance functionality in order to um, upload the uh, related documents. So we, with this record management plan and maintenance, you can attach documents, okay? You can just display and create, if you want to create and add documents related to the right of case, you can uh, select the right of and disposal approval documents, and you can create from here a document. Right? You can just click on new and create a new document. And here you can attach, for example, uh, meeting minutes or you can attach any supporting document that, um, that you want to include in the write-off notification. Okay? You can do it from the file. Okay? So from here you can attach any document you might have in your um, you may have in your computer. Okay, you have that explained in the in the job aid. You want to save? No. Okay. So this is how you will attach a document, 
And then, as we were saying, if we want uh, this notification to be approved, there will be no uh, automatic um, email sent to the to the um, notification approver, but you can use this send email in the action box. You can just click on send email. And uh, that will allow you to um, write uh, an email directly to the notification approver, or they can even see it in their inbox, okay? So from here, you can say, for example, um, please review and approve uh, the notification. Okay, so this is something that uh, you can uh, um, send directly to the to the notification approver. You can just go back, save, and after doing that, you can select here the uh, the recipients. So you can put the email of the uh, notification approver, or even if you know the um, the username in the system, you can even put their username, and automatically, if you put the username, they will receive it in their uh, SAP inbox. So you can either send uh, an email or send via the SAP inbox in the system. Okay. So I'm going to do both. So an email will be sent, and also uh, an SAP message will be sent to. Okay. I can send it. Okay. And I can send the notification uh, regarding attachments because I have a question in the um, in the chat regarding the attachments. So remember that attachments can be added, but they cannot be deleted. So in SAP in Omoja, you cannot the functionality to delete attachments is not uh, possible. You can always uh, put comments and mark an attachment as uh, not relevant, but once you add an attachment, um, once you add it an attachment, you cannot delete it. And then, if you are sending emails, just yes, include the notification. If they're sending via the, um, the SAP inbox, they will receive it in their inbox. They will receive the notification number in their inbox. So as a notification user, I have created and modified the notification, okay? I can save it, right? And now if I connect as a notification approver, so let's say that as a notification user, I have attached the documentation, but now it's the role of the notification approver to um, approve and release the notification. Okay, so that will be the, the role of the notification approver. And I'm gonna show it to you that in the system. So now I'm gonna connect as a notification uh, approver. So it's, a, it's gonna be Instructor02, the one that will play the role of the notification approver. Okay, so Charlotte, uh, yes, you can uh, regarding attachments again, you can um, add as many attachments as, as, as you want. So you can say, for example, version two or version three, if uh, one of the attachments you uploaded was wrong, you can um, uh, upload a new version marking that uh, that replaces uh, the old one. But remember, you cannot delete. You can, all, you can only add new attachments, but uh, those can somehow replace the wrong ones. So now I'm connected as a um, notification approver. I should have received in my email the notification, but I also uh, sent an SAP uh, message. So if as a notification approver, I work, I go to my inbox and I click on my un unread documents, I will be able to see the notification that I have just uh, created as a notification user. So I can see here that notification number, it's also appearing here. So it was the one ending with 8865. And that appears there because the um, notification user 
sent an email to the um, to the uh, notification approved. So I can see here the notification and the number is there. Okay. They can also run reports to see which um, notifications are um, pending approval, but uh, we always encourage you to communicate that one via email or via the SAP inbox as you as you want in your in your mission. Okay. So as a notification approver, I'm going to use IW52 with the notification number. Sorry. And I will use the notification number to um, approve the notification. Okay. So how can I approve the uh, notification? So I will need to change the status to approved, right? And because these statuses are marking the different states of the notification. So it was created and then was approved and you can see that there are steps for um, uh, right of process request prepared, LPSB reviewed, review approved. So by, by using the statuses and also by using the uh, tasks, the, both the notification user and the, uh, and the planner, and the disposal planner can um, indicate what's the status of the, um, of the, um, of the notification process. Okay. All right. So I'm going to mark the, um, I want to change the status of the notification and I'm going to also put in process the notification, right? So by changing the status and putting in process the notification, the notification is now approved. Okay. So I can save the notification and now if I enter again, I will see that the notification is in process and the status is approved. All right. So as a notification approver, I've done those two steps. I have marked the notification as approved by changing the status. And also I have released the notification by clicking on the green flag. Okay. So once the notification is uh, approved and released, the equipment master uh, man the equipment uh, master record maintainer right the um, has to be informed right so you can inform them via email or also using the uh, the sap functionality and uh, because in the end the equipment master record uh, maintainer is going to be the one that has to be uh, responsible for um, doing some actions in the equipment master record Okay, so the creator of the notification, in this case the disposal, uh, sorry, the notification user will use email or the SAP um, uh, inbox, the SAP messages to inform the um, equipment master data maintainer. And the equipment master data maintainer is the one responsible to uninstall the equipment and remove the user assignment and if needed, to bring the equipment back to stock. Okay, so if you need to manage uh, the equipment uh, in the warehouse, okay, if you, if um, with the right of uh, notification you need to um, bring the equipment back to stock to manage it in the warehouse, at this stage is where the um, uh, the equipment will have to be um, uh, will have to be moved back into the inventory. Okay. So how, so all this, inf the, the communication has to be uh, done via email or within the system, but then how the equipment master maintainer will do the uh, uninstallment and the remove user assignment. Okay. So let me show that to you in the, in the system. Okay. So let's say 
now I'm playing the role of the equipment uh, master record maintainer. Um, I will have received the um, the email or in my inbox in order to um, uh, uninstall and remove the assignment of an equipment, and I can use the IE02. And with the equipment number, okay, I will indicate here the equipment master record number. And I can see that the equipment is installed and it has in, and it's assigned to a person. Okay, So I should indicate here the notification number. So this field, the inventory number field, is the field that is used to link, and this is important, is the field that is used to link the equipment master record with the notification. So I should indicate here the um, notification number, that is this one, okay? So this field should be used to indicate the um, notification number that is processing the, uh, uh, the right of case. Okay. And that one equipment cannot be processed in several uh, notifications, right? Because there should be only one right of uh, notification for each equipment. So that's why uh, from the equipment point of view, you can use this field to indicate which is the number of the notification that is being used for that purpose. Um, I should also uninstall the equipment, and I can do that by uh, removing the functional location. So this functional location is where the um, where the uh, equipment is uh, located. I can remove it by clicking on change um, functional location and using the dismantle button. So I can use dismantle. The functional location has been removed. And now I can click on confirm. And you can see that the system status automatically changes from uh, available from installed to available all right and the other thing i need to do is the um the partner assignment so in this case the equipment is assigned to this staff member i should remove this user assignment because the equipment is going to be uh, written off okay so it's damaged and the uh, the user uh, the user accountable and this assignment should be also removed. So I can use the undo partner assignment to remove the user accountable. All right. So it's, it's, it has been removed and then also change the user status to is not assigned in operation. You can say it's um, equipment idle. Okay. And then later on in the process, we will change the we will change the status to write off in process. Okay. So here, um, Cass, maybe you can confirm that one. So in case at this stage that we are removing uh, the assignment, shall we leave the uh, equipment status to equipment idle, or we can just change it to write off in process? Yeah, write off in process. Write off in process, right? So we shouldn't be waiting for the write off case to be approved, right? Or, or prepared and approved. So we can, at this stage, we can already change it to write off in process, right? Yes. Okay, thank you, Cass. So we change uh, directly the status to write off in process, and uh, and that that will be all, right? So we have included the notification number. We have uh, uninstall the equipment and uh, change the status uh, to write off in process. And uh, we can save it. Okay, we can save and make sh and uh, that in that way we will reflect that the um, equipment is in uh, in process for being written off. And uh, here we have the notification number. We have still questions about what if uh, we have several notifications. So. Remember that in a notification, you can have several equipment uh, items included, but one equipment, it's only related to one uh, notification.
Okay. Sorry, uh, Ildefons, um, you posted a question about staff involvement. Um, if you could please elaborate a little bit more because I, I don't get it. I don't get that question. Okay. It's probably referring to a staff assessment case. Okay. Um, yeah. I don't know, Ildefons, are you saying that uh, not to remove the, the partner assignment of the individual? I don't. Uh, I think you can you can still remove the partner assignment, um, but the notification is where you would document the staff member involved. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense, guys. Thank you. All right. So yeah, thank you, Ildefons. All right. Um, so let me now save the equipment. All right. So we have uh, changed the the equipment master record to uninstall it, to remove the partner assignment, to change the status, and very important to link the notification and the equipment. So in the equipment is where you really um, link both the notification and the equipment, and this is done manually by the equipment master record. And this is very important. It's something. It's a very common issue. I think, as you, you can reinforce on that, okay? Because we have been seeing uh, a lot of notifications uh, um, raised for different equipments, but the equipment was not updated with the with the proper uh, um, in, uh, notification number. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. We stress that. Just don't put any leading characters uh, or anything like that so that the notification number matches, you know, the two are equal. Yeah, so this field should uh, only have the um, notification number with no, no other characters leading or, yeah? Okay. All right, so we have now updated the equipment status and we have done the um, uninstall of the equipment and the, from now on the, um, the uh, notification will be managed by the uh, disposal planner. So the disposal planner in property management unit in the missions should be the ones um, taking ownership of the notification request and uh, uh, completing or managing the different tasks that are pending for that um, right of case, okay? And here it says that this is the responsibility of the equipment master data maintainer to inform the disposal planner via email notification or via the SAP um, notifications, okay? So it's the equipment master record uh, maintainer responsible for handing over the responsibility to uh, from the technical unit uh, to the property management unit in the missions. Okay? So even though the disposal planner has uh, reports available, the SD11, the equipment master uh, record maintainer, is the one that should communicate um, that the um, notification is ready uh, to be processed by the uh, disposal planner. So from there, the disposal planner will take ownership of the notification and uh, will review uh, the different actions performed um, and will make sure that uh, all the proper documents are there and the right of case can be prepared and, uh, and uh, follow up, okay? So the disposal planner will review the information, okay, and can proceed, either proceed with a write-off or can contact the notification approver if additional information is required, okay? And we'll also prepare the case for write-off and we'll, um, and we'll attach it to the, uh, to the notification if needed. And also at this step is where also the, the equipment uh, master record, if it hasn't been done yet, can be updated to reflect that the write-off is in process. So you can see that each uh, step here, so each uh, 
stem number reflects or corresponds to a task in the uh, notification. So if we go back to the notification, and now we try to manage that notification as a disposal planner, because this notification document is shared by notification users, even uh, by uh, approvers and also by disposal planners. So the disposal planner can um, manage all the process via or by using the task list. Okay. So in here, up to now, we have done a lot of uh, tasks. We have done a lot of actions that should be marked as uh, completed. I, I have been um, seeing questions regarding the task processors, the planned start date and planned end date, and also the completion by and also the dates. So you can make use as a disposal planner if you want to track responsibilities, if you want to track uh, timings, like uh, when that action is planned and when that action was actually completed and, and by whom, you can you make use of the task list. And that's the main purpose of the task list. Okay, so we have we haven't done that okay in this example, but the main purpose of the task list is to record and keep track of that one. Okay, so for example, in the create notification, it was the um, um, the notification user the one who created. Okay, so we could have added here the completed by. Okay, so we could have added here that it was the SD01 notification user, okay, or, or even the, the name of the, let's say it was Saida, the one playing the role of the notification user, and uh, we could even say that uh, this notification was created yesterday, okay. So you can make use of the um, completed by and the completion date to keep track of when the tasks were completed and by whom. And you can even see the status, right? Now it's outstanding and you can uh, work on um, completing the task. So creation date was already completed. So we can put that uh, this task was already completed and you can see that the status changed to completed from outstanding to completed and it even gets a different uh, color. And uh, we also completed the attached supporting documentation. The, the um, notification was already approved and released. We can mark this was completed. The equipment master data maintainer was informed that the request was approved. So this one was already completed. The equipment status was changed and the equipment was uninstalled. So that one, we also did it. The disposal planner, let's say, um, was informed, okay? And now we are at the stage of reviewing the notification by the disposal planner. So it's important that you understand that this task list is here to help you um, manage as a disposal planner the entire process. Okay, so you can, yeah, so you can play with the uh, responsibilities, with the planned and uh, uh, completion date, right, to ref really reflect uh, the different uh, task when were when were those completed and by whom. Okay. All right. So let's say that as a disposal planner. I have reviewed the notification and everything makes sense. So I can mark that one as completed. Offline, as a notification, uh, sorry, as a disposal planner, I will prepare the right of case for submission that will be done offline. So I can also mark that uh, this task was completed. And in this case, um, the equipment record could be updated to reflect that the equipment uh, is in right of uh, it's uh, is in right of process. Okay, so it's been written off. This one we already did it right. If you remember, 
in the change agreement, we already changed the status to right of in process. So this task was already um, performed. So we can also mark it as uh, completed. And then once the right of case is uh, prepared and submitted, it's, uh, um, there should be right the meeting for the LPSB or HPSB review, right? So while we uh, wait for the LPSB to meet or the HPSB to meet, the task, um, the task for the notification shouldn't be uh, updated, right? So we cannot move it from request approved to LPSB review. So that one, we should be playing with the notification statuses to really reflect what's the status of the notification. Okay. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Ildefons, you have a question regarding the um, the uh, property survey board. If they are involved in all the right of um, cases, right? So, this we will talk about this a little bit more. Uh, next week, but uh, it's all based on the delegation of authority, right? So depending on the, um, basically the value of the items being uh, uh, written off, it will be delegated, the approval will be delegated to the um, CMS, DMS, or the delegated, delegated official in the missions, or L LPSB or H uh, HPSB, okay? So Cash, you wanna say something more on that? So that, we will talk a little bit more on the, um, on the delegation of authority uh, next week. No, but uh, just before Il Defense's question, yeah. sort of related, I wanted to make sure that the disposal planner can change the case type at this point in the process. This one. For example, right. if if mm -hmm. if it was the wrong selection, or you know, if it started, or it said, okay, no, I think we need local property survey board review. Let's do that. Mm -hmm. So this was uh, selected at the moment of the notification creation, but the disposal planner, um, a disposal planner can can amend it, right? But the the review process will change. Sorry, uh, sorry. This process, the the approval process will will change in that case. So it, it can be uh, reviewed and approved by the designated authority or by the LPSB or HPSB. Right, guys? Yes, I just wanted to make sure that okay. it could change. Yeah. So in the end, the disposal planner once he received the yeah. uh, the notification, he is. Um, uh, fully responsible, right, to uh, take care of the notification and to make sure that all the different steps are uh, followed, right? Okay. So let's keep it as it was, the local property survey board. And uh, so these uh, tasks are meant to help the disposal planner to make sure that everything um, um, was done for that uh, notification and for that right of case. Okay, so let's go back to our presentation to make sure that we are in the same page. Okay, so the disposal planner will prepare the right of case and will submit it. And the uh, equipment data maintainer will change at this stage the status to right of in process. This is something that we already did. Okay. The disposal planner will change uh, the status to um, LPSB or HPSB review based on the case type, depending on if it's going to be the local property survey board or the headquarters property survey board. That's we have a notification status for each of them. Once the uh, LPSB or HPSB 
has uh, met, they have met, and the, the, we are waiting for the decision, then we can again change the notification status to um, await approval decision by the uh, property survey board. So there is a different status in the notification. And once the notification, uh, the right of case has been approved, then uh, we can change the status again to review approved. Okay, and there is a notification status for the review approved um, once we receive the approval from either the LP LPSB or HPSB. Okay. Um, once we have the uh, the approval from the from the property to pay board, okay. We can attach the um, all the information in the notification, okay, and uh, even the meeting minutes from the property survey board, and that will uh, be the supporting documentation to the notification. And uh, this documentation has to um, indicate the primary and the alternative disposal methods, and we have to attach that to the notification. And it's important that the uh, the um, documents, the meeting minutes, reflect the exact approval date. More important for if we are talking about a fixed asset, because that will be the date where the fixed asset will be the recognized from the system, and that date will be used by the uh, fixed asset accounting user to put it as a date of the recognition of the fixed asset. So it's important that the approval date uh, appears in the meeting minutes uploaded in the notification if we are talking about fixed assets. Okay. So that uh, all that steps um, are reflected in the notification. Okay. So we can play around with the different uh, statuses, like uh, it's under LPSB reviewed once. All right. Sorry. Okay, so we have to move the different uh, statuses. You cannot overpass the different statuses. You have to move one by one from approval to write of request prepared, from write of request prepared to LPSB review, from LPSB review to um, await approval decision, right? And uh, from await approval decision to reviewed to review approved. Okay. Right. Right. You have to move the notification uh, through throughout the different statuses to make sure that uh, in the end you reflect that the notification was approved by the in this case the LPSB and you attach all the important information for that right of case. And that's here in this example, we are doing that uh, everything in one hour, but this process can last uh, very long, okay? Can last uh, days, weeks, or even months, okay? And uh, to uh, really reflect the different dates and the different information for that right of case. So you, you will indicate that in the right of, uh, sorry, notification statuses, and also you will indicate the tasks as completed. Okay, so you will attach the approval memorandum to the notification and you will mark all these tasks as completed. Okay, as you move through the different uh, statuses. Once you have the, the disposal method, okay, that should also be attached in the notification, the disposal method is not reflected in the notification. Uh, in the field, right? It's, it will be reflected in the in the attachments. But the disposal method, it's really specified in the equipment master record. So the equipment master record uh, maintainer should uh, go uh, into the equipment master record and change the status and indicate the disposal method. So up to 
the review is approved, the notification is approved, the status for the equipment is right of in process, but once we know the disposal method, we should change it to either sale, cannibalization, destruction, or any of the available disposal methods, right? If the item was lost, we could even select disposal not required. In this case, we are gonna select destruction, okay? So the, the, uh, the item was completely damaged and uh, one of the available disposal methods could be uh, destruction, okay? But the important thing here is that uh, you understand that the disposal methods um, are uh, reflected in the equipment master record and uh, in the notification they will appear in the uh, documents attached to the um, to the notification okay so I will change um, the I have changed the status and included the uh, disposal method okay and I can also mark this task as completed, right? So I have updated the equipment with the disposal method, right? I can mark this task as complete. The operational disposal, the operational disposal depending on the uh, disposal method can be uh, different, right? If it's different if we are talking about uh, disposing the equipment as sale, as destruction, so um, these, the steps to operational dispose the item will differ depending on the disposal method. Okay. So the, um, let's go back to our presentation. So we have updated the equipment with the disposal method. This is something we just did. Okay. Disposal method as an equipment master record. If we are talking about a fixed asset, we should at this stage uh, inform the fixed asset accounting user to the recognize the fixed asset master record. We will talk about more about fixed assets next week, uh, but there is uh, specific job aid and even your colleagues from the from the fixed asset um, uh, unit. They they were trained on the process to uh, process the um, um, the fixed asset the recognition and to write off a fixed asset from the uh, financial point, point of view, okay? The important thing is that uh, the recognition date that they will use is the one that will, that should appear in the um, documents attached to the notification, okay? The operational disposal of equipment, um, depending on the disposal method as we, as we said, so the operational disposal for a sale will involve a sale order, a sales order, an album delivery, and other uh, system documents. For cannibalization, it will uh, involve different steps like uh, additions to stock. For the instruction, it could uh, involve um, um, bringing back the item into stock and moving that into the disposal area in the warehouse and then perform good issue to scrap. So the disposal steps, we are not covering that much here in the in the uh, in this session, okay? But uh, this operational disposal, as we said, will vary depending on the disposal method selected, okay? Um, so once we have completed the operational disposal, we will, and this reflects um, also what um, uh, we are seeing in the questions regarding the deactivation of the equipment and closing the notification. So once we have completed the operational disposal, okay, we need to deactivate the equipment to mark from the system point of view that the equipment is no longer in use. Okay, it has been completely deactivated and that has to be done by the by the equipment master data maintainer, okay, to deactivate the equipment, and they can also upload any supporting documents. And the last step after the equipment has been deactivated would be to close the notification and make sure that all the tasks have been marked as completed and we can close the notification, okay? So if we go back to, the, to our notification document, 
we are still we still have here the three tasks as pending. So the operational disposal, uh, in this case, is, is distraction. So uh, there will be additional steps that we will not cover in this session, like uh, bringing the item back to stock, moving to disposal area, uh, uh, creating a reservation to perform the goods issue to scrap. Okay, and once all these steps are completed, we can mark this task and mark it as completed. Okay, and the deactivation of the equipment has to be done by the equipment master record uh, maintainer. Again, in the IE02, we go to the equipment. This is the equipment we can see that is available. How do we uh, proceed to inactivate it? So we can go here and use the functions active inactive, right? and we can deactivate it. By clicking on deactivate it, the system status will change to inactive and uh, the equipment item will appear as inactive. Okay. And in here we can also use um, the... Uh, uh, we can also attach uh, documents to reflect um, uh, or to support the uh, deactivation of that equipment. Okay, so let's uh, uh, ch save the, the equipment master record. Now it's inactive. Okay, and we can complete the task to deactivate equipment. Complete, right? And then how to close the notification? So we should uh, mark the last task as completed, right? Sorry, and then we should uh, complete the notification by clicking on the complete uh, flag. Okay, we uh, we will click on the complete, and we will mark that one as completed, and that the all the different steps for that notification will appear as completed. Right. So if we go back again to the notification, we will see that all the tasks were completed and now the notification status is now completed. Okay, and the notification was fully um, processed and completed. All right, so we have uh, completed the last uh, step in the process. Here is the summary of the different actions we have reviewed. So technical unit and or the self accounting unit are responsible for the first six tasks, six uh, tasks up to the uh, up to informing the disposal planner that the request is approved, and from there on, PMU in the missions is responsible for all the uh, um, following uh, tasks for from the review notification up to closing the notification. So even if there are different actors involved, like for example the fixed asset accounting user or the equipment uh, master data maintainer, everything is uh, uh, managed uh, by the disposal planner. All right? Okay, so one last um, slide before we um, close the, um, the presentation and we um, give the floor to the participants. Okay, so here in this slide we have the different documents that we have uh, used in the system. So in the notification, we are basically using the status to um, to mark uh, the uh, the process of the notification in which status the notification is in, right? And we use the status field and also the task list. So if you open the notification by looking at the status and also at the task list, you can understand uh, at uh, which step of the notification of the right of process we are in. How do we link equipments to notifications? We can, if we are talking about a fixed asset or only one equipment, we can use the equipment field. If we are talking about writing off several equipments, we have to use the description field and then attach the list of equipments. And then 
the right of case type, okay, if it's going to be uh, the designated authority or if it's going to be LPSB or HPSB, it's uh, included in the case type of the notification. Okay, that's what is included in the notification document. On the other hand, in the equipment master record is where we include the disposal method, right, in the user status field, and we can indicate here after the um, right of case has been completely reviewed, uh, which is the disposal method. In here, we can see if the item it's uh, installed, so we have to uninstall it, we have to remove the user assignment, and we can even uh, return it back to stock. And this is the real uh, link between notifications and equipment. So the real link between the equipment and the notification, so which uh, uh, equipment are being treated in a notification, is done in the equipment master record in the inventory number field. This is very important. This is where CAS was reinforcing before that the only the notification number should be uh, populated there in the inventory number field. And equipment in the case of fixed asset is where we will see the um, link to the asset master record that we will talk about the linkage between equipment and fixed assets a little bit more in the uh, in the sessions scheduled for next week. Okay, so equipment will be linked to fixed asset for those that are considered fixed asset. And uh, here is where we will talk a little bit more about the, how they, they will process the, um, the, the recognition based on the, um, the meeting minutes from the um, LPSB or HPSB. Okay, so we will talk a little bit more on fixed asset next week. All right. Um, okay. So that was uh, the different steps that we wanted to show to you um, today. Okay, um, I think there were maybe a little bit um, too many steps. This is a long process. I mean, it's not a difficult process. So everything is governed by the notification uh, and the different tasks. That's why we have designed some um, practical exercises for you to do the same steps in the training environment, okay? So you will receive from us not only the, the presentation and the recorded session, but we have prepared for you uh, an exercise, okay? That you will have to go through the same steps that we have been doing in this uh, uh, WebEx session, and you will have to uh, complete the right of case for some equipment items, okay? And you will be um, requested to perform same steps in the training environment compared to the ones we have shown to you before, okay? The, I, we think that the best way to um, get familiar with that is to uh, do it by, your, by yourself, okay? Um, any questions, comments um, from any attendee or even Cass, anything you would like to add? Sorry, I ran out of time already. It's um, 3.30. No, on my end, nothing. Okay. Uh, remember that we also have sessions scheduled for next week. So today it was just an overview of the process from beginning to end. Okay, so I think questions, more policy-related questions or more specific questions on different uh, type of items uh, can be um, discussed uh, next week, okay? I think we have we will have more time for discussions and open questions next week and you and you will get also more familiar with the process once you do it by yourself. Okay? So you will receive two exercises from our end. One to complete a write of process and write of case by yourself and this is something you will have to return it back to us uh, with the uh, notification number that uh, you will create and we will have a look at uh, your notification to make sure that uh, you have uh, followed the steps, like for example, you have correctly linked the notification with equipment, you have selected properly the, the um, case type and all the things we have uh, reviewed today. And, um, 
and then you will also receive another exercise uh, regarding the teachback. So we said yesterday that uh, you as an LPET, you are also um, encouraged to share the knowledge with your colleagues, okay? So we are asking you to contact your training unit to start discussing about uh, how you will uh, pass on this message to your colleagues, okay? So in this exercise, we will be asking you to uh, to liaise with your training unit and also with your other colleagues in the mission and start thinking about how you will uh, arrange uh, a teachback campaign in your mission, how many people you have to involve and the different roles that you will need to uh, um, to invite. Okay. All right. Uh, um, any other question? Anything from? Do we have anything? No comments in the chat? Okay. So I think, uh, I hope that we didn't overwhelm you with uh, with a lot of information. I think you will get more familiar with the uh, with the process once you do it by yourself. So um, I think we can close the session now and uh, also feel free to, um, once you receive the exercises and you are doing that by yourself, um, feel free to contact us via email or by or by telephone, and we will try to guide you accordingly. Okay. Uh, okay. We have a question from Ikran regarding right of of expendables. Okay. So non equipment. Yeah. So this is something we want to cover um, next week. Okay. And we will talk about what's the difference in the process uh, regarding serialized versus non serialized, fixed assets, non fixed assets, and so on. So this is something we can further discuss um, next week. Okay, so thank you very much for attending and uh, hope to see you next week.